everyone. Welcome back to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I am Kyra and I am thrilled today to have my new friend, Brendan from Master Talk. So Master Talk is his YouTube channel that he founded really to help us to flourish as public speakers. And so today, Brendan is going to join me and just give us some tips because right now we know everybody is working virtually and everyone is um, having to present. So you are probably dressed really nice from the waist up and, um, you know, looking good, you know, head down. But he's actually going to give us some tips today to help us be better presenters and really hold people's engagement um, virtually. So welcome, Brendan, to you, girl. Um, Glow up, girl. <laughs> of course, Kara. It's such a pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. But before you start to give us um, the tips that we need, I want to know more about you. So tell the audience um, about Brendan. Yeah, of course. So I'm born and raised in a city called Montreal in Canada. And how, how my story started was my parents looked at me and they said, Brendan, you live in Montreal. So you need to know how to speak French, which is particularly weird for a city like that in Canada. Uh -huh. So my parents throw me out into a French education system for the first 12 years of my life, pretty much. Not only was I afraid of communication and public speaking, but I was presenting in a language I didn't even know. So you can see me in grade right. one or two, looking at an audience and going, uh, bonjour. And that was my <laughs> life for, uh, for the vast majority of it. Mm -hmm. Then when I entered university, I started doing these things called case competitions. So think of it like professional sports, but for nerds. So other guys my <laughs> age are you know, playing basketball or soccer or rugby or whatever it is they do. As you can clearly tell, not really my thing. <laughs> so what I did instead was I would do presentations competitively. And that's what was my passion when I was there. So I presented hundreds of times, coached dozens of people. So by the time I graduated and I started working in corporate Canada, I guess, rather than America, mm -hmm. I just asked myself, what can I do to make a bigger impact in the world? That's when I decided to start Master Talk because I realized a lot of the content on public speaking on YouTube was terrible. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of bad advice, like imagine everyone in their underpants. You're kind of just saying, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> a lot of weird stuff. So as I started making uh, videos in my basement, didn't think much of it, but my mm -hmm. production got better, I got better, and here we are today. Awesome. No, that's really, really cool. And I think, um, you know, being thrown into it at an early age is, uh, you know, it's just like you said, it's just like someone, you know, playing a sport or someone who's a musician, um, just sort of um, you've had time to finesse and it's your craft, you know, and you're really good at it. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's like, yeah, I, I think it's definitely something that a lot of people in, um, struggle with. And for you, <laughs> when you said, I can tell you people are like, yeah, just imagine everybody naked. And you're like, mm, like wait a no, second. that's crazy. That doesn't make any sense. So what you're going to tell us today, um, let's go ahead and jump into some of those tips of how um, we can become better and more uh, effective public speakers. Yeah, absolutely. I think the way that we can start this conversation off is why are we scared of public speaking? Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to people in the States, in Canada, in Europe, Asia, whatever country you want, I've probably spoken at some point to yeah. some podcaster in that city, except uh -huh. maybe like North Korea or something. But the point that I'm driving <laughs> is that everyone is scared of public speaking, regardless of where you are, where you're from, who you are. Mm -hmm. But we don't know why. So let's clarify that. Where do we give most of our presentations? The answer for most of us is school. Mm -hmm. High school, elementary school, university, college, right. all that jazz. Because presentations, as you probably know, Kyra, isn't something optional. We don't wake up one morning and go, Hey, Kara, you want to get breakfast and present all day? Not right, yeah. <laughs> it's not something we do. Yeah. Right? All of the presentations we give are mandatory. So we're sitting together in high school, and three things happen. One, we never get to pick the topic. And if we do, yeah. it's generally something we're not passionate about. Think about the Renaissance in history class that you have. Right, to yeah, yeah. You're sitting there thinking it's fruit or something. You're just like, what? <laughs> Number two students students don't care to listen to us not because they don't care about us we're great people here that's not the issue mm -hmm. the issue is we're presenting to people who also have to present after us 
So we're standing there thinking that we're bad speakers because nobody's paying attention to our speech. But in reality, what's happening is people are sitting there thinking about their presentation in the next 10 minutes mm-hmm. right after you. Yeah. They're like, yeah. oh, I hope I don't mess this up. And like, So you're sitting there like, oh, I guess I'm bad, which isn't true. Number three, mm-hmm. teachers. Teachers are very well educated, very well intentioned, but also very stressed. You got 50 students in a classroom, 70 mm-hmm. students in a classroom. You got two classes to go through all of them. Do you have time to coach everyone individually? Right. Probably yeah. Not. So yeah. let's recap that. You never get to pick the topic for 99% of your presentations. You're always presenting to audiences who don't want to hear you, to teachers who can't coach you, and this behavior gets repeated in everything that you do. Mm-hmm. Math, sciences, languages, gym, music, on and on and on. Mm-hmm. We're taught to believe that public speaking is right. a chore. Yeah, and it definitely starts there, and then it goes... It follows you through your professional, you know, you get to your professional career and it's the same thing. You are in a meeting with people who are not paying attention a lot of times because if you're presenting, like you said, you don't pick the topic, it's a work topic. And then you also have other people who are probably going to be presenting after you. So they're looking, doing this, looking at their notes, but and, and practicing in their head and not really paying attention. And again, like you said, you sort of, then you go through that process of just, you don't really have anyone who's gonna pull you inside. Let me coach you and tell you about, like here are some things you could do better. So yeah, it's definitely, you're sort of breaking, helping people to break a cycle. Um, that would just continue to like follow them. Absolutely. And just to build on that, because I love what you said there about work. And that carries on your whole life. So if you're at school, it's tied to a grade. And if it's at work, it's tied to a result. And if you mess up any of those presentations, Mm -hmm. you get punished for it. Whether it's a lower grade in school, or whether it's a promotion you don't get at work, or if you're a business owner, the same analogy applies. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing we need to understand with public speaking is to realize that the fear of public speaking has nothing to do with us, but rather the system in which we grew up learning the skill in the first place. Mm. I like that. Because the most times there, yeah, you like you just said, there really isn't a system. It doesn't help you. You just go out there and <laughs> go out there and just fail like time after time after time. <laughs> Right. Or or just to add more layer to that, the system teaches you that public speaking isn't something that's interesting or entertaining or something you want to be mastering. Yeah. I remember even when I was in college, I took a speech communications because my major was speech comm. And I remember taking like speech classes and how everybody hated them. They're like, oh my God, like, I don't want to do this. Like, why do we have to do this? And you would just always hear people saying, oh God, I'm just doing it because it's like on my list and I have to get, as long as I get a C is what people would say. (laughs) And you, you feel like that sort of carries on to people in their professional lives. So a lot of times, even like in, in corporate world, you hear people who are like, oh my God, I just want to get through this presentation today. So, yeah. Just a bill of that. When I took speech class, they didn't even give me an A. I got a B plus. <laughs> what? You, got, you got a B. <laughs> I got, how, how did I get a B? Just, exactly. You're pa- and yeah, you're passionate about it, and you've been doing this since you were a child. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. What do they know? So, yeah, that's I the system. The support. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, and and to build like one easy way to fix that, just as a pro tip for mm-hmm. educators are listening. Just make them pick the topic they want to do. I have seven-year-olds in some of my high premium programs. Seven, uh-huh. not 70. They're seven years old. Uh-huh. And they're better than any of my executive clients <laughs> because I, I let them choose the topic. I just right. looked at her and I was like, what do you want to present? She was like, oh, well, I really like school. I want to present my first day at school. I was like, do it. Yeah. She was amazing. She had like her own professional microphone. I was like, whoa. Oh, like, wow. I was like, this girl does not play around. She is so, not playing. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course. Awesome. I love that. I love that tip. So after we sort of, you know, after we've conquered the fact that we know the system is not really set up for us to win in a public speaking, you know, forum, what, what, what next? Right. So now how do we set ourselves up to win? Yes. Now that we understand that. Yeah. So now that we know this, here's the trick is knowing how to practice in the right way so you can skyrocket your communication skills in the shortest amount of time. 
I'll give you an easy analogy. Okay. Let's say me and you want to learn how to play piano with the assumption that you don't know how to play piano, which might or might not be true, but let's keep rolling with it. Yeah. So we have two options. Mm -hmm. Option one is saying, okay, Kara, let's get a bunch of songs together and figure this out. 15, 20 songs. And if we're Mozart, this is going to work just fine. But unfortunately for us, we're not Mozart. So we have to resort to option two, which is we each pick one song and we just practice that one song. Mm -hmm. So a couple of months go by, we're practicing. We both get invited to a gala. It's like this fancy schmancy uh, black tie event or black you know, dress, whatever. We mm -hmm. get there, we see a piano. And you look at me and you go, hey, Brendan, why don't I just play that song that I've been practicing? So you sit down, you start playing the piano. Everyone gathers around you and says, hey, Kara, are you like a pianist or something? You're so amazing at piano. And you're sitting there like, oh, you know, no big deal. I've been practicing for many <laughs> right. months. I'm really good, even if you only know one song. Mm -hmm. So when you mm -hmm. go back home, that confidence that people give you makes you believe whether you want to or not that you're going to be an exceptional penis. So you're going to look at those 15 songs that we dumped before and say, yeah, let me just pick these back up. I can learn all of these. Yeah, I'm of the course. best. I'm a master now. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that analogy we can apply for every skill, cooking, YouTubing, being on a podcast, jogging and running a marathon. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that in public speaking. It's Wednesday, your boss, your clients, your teacher comes up to you and says, Kyra, I need a presentation for Friday. And you're just there like, looks like I'm not talking about family for two days. So you get a presentation together. After 10 hours of work, you present it. And then you take that presentation, you crumble it up, throw it in the garbage and move on to the mm -hmm. next one. Whereas what the best speakers in the world do is they take one or two presentations and present it hundreds of times. That is how you master public speaking. Mm -hmm. That's a great tip because the, <laughs> I think what you what most people do is it is it's so true. Most people are like, "Whew, got that over with. Let's ball this thing up and we're not going to even think about it until the next time. And so many people, how do you feel about, you know, what what's your what are your thoughts on notes and being able to so <laughs> I um, so in my everyday um, life, um, we have a group. We have a present a webcast that we put on, and a lot of people, you know, have to present. And you know, people are always like, "What about my notes? What about my notes?" And it's like you should have notes, but you should not just sit here and read like word for word. Like they they literally be like staring at the screen <laughs> and just and then. The cow did jump over the moon. Indeed, he jumped over the moon and he thought that um, the sky was brown. You know, so it's that. <laughs> I got to join this class. What class is this? <laughs> and, you know, you're you're really like, no, this is, you know, you just need to have some bullets, you know, just some things that trigger you. But like you said, if you've practiced enough, you should already be able to tell that story. So you should think of it as like a story that you're like, you're the person, you're the storyteller. And I think not enough people are telling stories. It's like you said, they're just like, well, somebody told me I got a presentation um, that I need to do on Friday. I'm just gonna do it. And then I'm gonna hurry up and I'm just gonna rid my mind of it because it's such a fear. So it's just like, I want it over with. I, I am completely in agreement with you. I, I totally <laughs> disagree with what you're saying. It's, it's this idea that since people see it as a chore, they don't get anywhere. The other issue that a lot of people ask me about is, well, Brendan, how do I do the same presentation a lot? I mean, I'm at work. I work at a bank. Mm -hmm. I'm always changing presentations. That person would be right. But let's assume that person's name is Julia. Mm -hmm. What I would say is, Julia, totally cool. What do you do outside of work? And she'll say something, well, Brendan, I don't understand the relevance of this question, but <laughs> I run I run marathons. That's right? uh -huh. something I do. And I was like, oh, tell me about that. And she goes, well, you know, I've run a couple of marathons over the last couple of years. I've won a couple of silver and bronze medals or even a gold one once. And I go, okay. And then she goes, but I don't see the relevance. And I say, well, I do. Make a presentation on your journey running a marathon, what you learned, what are the strategies, mm -hmm. what's your training regimen, your diet plan, what are you eating, what should we be eating? and present it, not to 3,000 people, to three people, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your kids, if you have any, you know, your partner, mm -hmm. friends, doesn't really matter. Right. All it takes is for one person to go, hey, Julia, you know, that presentation you gave really inspired me to, yeah. to go for a run today. Thank you. And then Julia becomes addicted to public speaking. 
Same thing with you, Kyra. Advice is simple. Make a presentation on your own podcast. Mm-hmm. How are you glowing up other women around the world? How are you using this platform as a way to empower women to make better decisions to mm-hmm. live enlightened lives? That, when you do it the first time, probably won't sound like this. You'll be like, uh, hey guys, it's Kyra and uh, we're doing yeah. this podcast. <laughs> but after you do it a hundred times, you're going to be like, imagine a world filled with light and it's going to be glow. Oh, I gotta yeah. listen. I gotta listen to the show. <laughs> yeah, well, you know that's that's interesting because I met. I did uh, probably a couple weeks ago. I was asked to speak about Glow Up Girl, and I had go. to do a presentation um, to a club. And you know, I probably a couple of years ago for work had to do a presentation. I work in marketing in my everyday life, and that's what I opened with was like a story and just connected to the audience because it was more and there were more men than women in the room so I love sports I know most of them do and I found a way to put analogies together that would immediately catch them and I was like and I saw that you know that you see the crowd doing this oh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's like you said, it's just about building confidence. And it's also about like, how do you feel about those early, like ice, sort of like icebreaker moments? Because not everybody is funny. Not everybody can, you know, connect with people through humor. But, you know, what do you think about that um, when people are starting to kick off their presentation? Absolutely. So, so the way that I think about this, and you're absolutely right in that regard, I don't, I don't prescribe medication, right? I just give right. you suggestions. So what I mean by that is I'm not going to say, you know, Kyra, the best way, the only way right. to start your press <laughs> is a joke. <laughs> you need to go knock, knock. And I was like, what? No, the key. You're like, wait a minute. There's nobody yeah. here. They're like, moments. nobody's here. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't going to be here no more. <laughs> they mm-hmm. run out. They run. So the key, rather is to say, what is my key idea? If there's one sentence that I want people to remember today, mm-hmm. let's assume it's their last presentation ever, all that jazz, what do you want that sentence to be? And then the next question, which is a simple one, is what is the best way of convincing my audience of that idea? So for me, the one sentence is simple. I believe anyone can master public speaking. If mm-hmm. I could go from a kid who did all of his presentations in a language he didn't know, to speaking like this, I believe anyone else can. So what's right. the best way of defending that? When I started, it might not have been a personal story. I'm not really comfortable sharing that at the beginning anyways. Uh-huh. But then over time, I kind of just say, oh, why don't I just talk about the fact when I was five years old and I sucked at French and I was bad at that. That's the mm-hmm. best way of selling that idea. Right. But if you're talking about something else, it might be a statistic. So it all depends mm-hmm. on who, you're, who you are and what the idea is, what you're comfortable with. But always remember that the person who is the messenger of that message is the person who is best suited to pick the best tool to execute that idea. Great, great tip, yes. Yeah, because I do think that people um, have been led to (laughs) feel like they must say something funny or they need to try and say something funny because those are probably the people that are imagining the audience naked, right? (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah yeah so they're like bombing like the, it's just the train is they're going like off sweating the you're yeah. like what's going on you're like you don't want to know <laughs> I mean, that is definitely the best and i don't mean to make fun of anyone but it, it is pretty interesting when people are just sweating bullets it's like it's like what's wrong nothing <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. What's your problem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are there people who are like, I just, I need to get in the zone and I need to leave me alone. Don't talk to me. Let me just, you know, let me focus on my message. And, you know, I tend to be the other way. I'm just like, eh, you know, I practice. I have my key bullets and, you know, I'm just, just going to do it. Like I, I started to tell myself that these were just people. Like <laughs> they're just people like me. And I'm sure when they present that they all have some similar, you know, they get nervous or, you know, anxious about having to present. So why am I just treating them like they're some type of like, you know, expert level, you know, speaker. Now, if I were speaking and presenting to you, it probably would be like, uh, I'd be like, now he is an expert um, at public speaking, but you know what I mean? It's like finding that comfort in um, the fact that, we're all just they're just regular people too absolutely yeah yeah okay what else what else do you got what else do you have that you <laughs> what can else give us? yeah <laughs> give us those tips 
I'm like, give me those tips. Yeah, just give it. <laughs> All right. So we talk. Okay. So the next thing we could talk about is probably the puzzle analogy. So if if I were to describe public speaking to an object, that object is probably jigsaw puzzles. You know those thousand piece puzzles we used yes. to do as kids that people yeah. still do, of course. I've done some of those during the pandemic. So yeah. There you go. Yeah. So so if I asked you, this is gonna be great, Kairos. You probably know the answer. <laughs> if you were to pick. Which pieces to start with first? Which ones would you pick, and why?、Mm, of course, I start with the outside, and I build in. Why? Because it gives me a framework, starts the structure for me. I just love it when hosts just play along so well. <laughs> so the question we need to think about is why don't we do that with public speaking? So when we start presentations, when we get ready, this is what happens. We got two days to prepare for this thing.、Uh-huh. So we take the middle pieces in our jigsaw puzzles and we start shoving them, like we、yeah. shove content.、We're、like,、yeah. ah, screw the corners, just go straight for the middles. <laughs> 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 it was like, hey, whoa, Kyrie, you're just like, whoa, hey,、yeah. start with the corners, and they're、right. just not listening. To、mm-hmm. So when they get to their presentation day, and they present, they get to their last slide and they go, uh, yeah, so uh, thanks. <laughs> Press、yeah. the key. <laughs> Is you want to start with the edges first.、Mm-hmm. The way that people practice is they shove content and they just present the whole thing thirty times. What you should be doing is you want to sp- you want to present your introduction, just your intro, fifty times. It's a minute, right? So it's not、mm-hmm. going to take you that long.、Mm-hmm. Then you present your conclusion fifty times, or else what's a what's a good movie with a bad ending? A terrible movie, right? right. So yeah. Same thing. Make sure、yeah. your your conclusion's ace, and then tackle the middle. But what's important is don't tackle it alone. It's boring to do a ten thousand piece puzzle alone. Yeah, it is daunting. It's <laughs> long. You're like, yeah, you're like, guys, with it. It takes a really long time. And I, I wish somebody was there. But、yeah. the, point, the point is, if you got three or four people, your family, you guys are okay. Like, oh, Kyra, I'll take the sun. You take、mm-hmm. the bear or、mm-hmm. whatever. Same thing with keynotes. I never practice alone. As a professional, I don't practice alone. Right. I get my friends. To just rip me apart in the middle pieces, <laughs> and we figure out how to simplify stuff, and then you're done. So apply、yeah. the pan- puzzle analogy. No, I love that. I, I love I love that, and you're so right. I mean, so many people will start. I mean, I've I'm guilty of it. I've done that too, where you have all these thoughts, and you're like, uh, let me just dump. I'm just dumping things,、um, dumping things. And what I started to do is instead of going straight for the, you know, the PowerPoint or the Canva or whatever, and building something that looked really great. Like I started to just outline it on a word in a word document or a Google Doc, and just to start figuring out like what is the story, and at the end, what are the key things that I want them to take away. So I said this in the intro. I said all this meat in the middle, and then when they got to the end, what do I hope they remember, and what actions? Because I think a lot of times people. Don't leave the action that they want the listener to follow through on. Like you said, it's just at the end. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> you know, but like, what do you want that person to go away and do? Absolutely. So, and, and I would say for me, that was a question for me, right? <laughs> the call to action. Well, so、oh. I would say the call to action for me is ask yourself this fundamental question:、mm-hmm. How would the world change if you were an incredible speaker? Think about that. If your answer is just a promotion at work, you're answering in the wrong way. But if your answer is, "Hey, you know, I always argue with my my partner all the time, and this communication thing will really help us get really clear on what we're saying." It could be, "Oh, I love to travel, and it's going to make it much easier to speak with different cultures, especially if I don't know the language."、Mm-hmm. That's what public speaking is about. It's not just about presentations. Public speaking is everything that you do. From the dinners that you have with your old friends or your new ones, to the families that you raise, to the people that you love,、right. you're always communicating all the time. It's what we do as human beings. And、right. the more crystal clear you are as to why you want to master it for yourself, selfishly, that is how you skyrocket your skills. I love that. That's so great because I love you know I love it and and I hope that you guys in the audience too love that because it gives you. It, it it expands it into your everyday, and it's not just、um, looking at it from a, oh I have to do this, but it's how you interact with the world and how people see you and, and when you're speaking. So no, this is this is excellent. I love this. So now, so every Sunday, you release a new episode, right? 
That's correct. And right now, so <laughs> no, mm-hmm. I, I so now everybody, um, Brendan, tell them. So before I quiz you with these five things with Brendan. I want to make sure, um, mm-hmm, that's right, I got you, five things. I wanna make sure that everybody knows, you know, where to find you online. And even if people, you know, want to take advantage of your services, um, how do they get in contact with you? Absolutely, so, so Master Talk, the YouTube channel in one word, is the best way to check out, you know, all my free YouTube content. And if you wanna message me directly, the best way to do that is Instagram. So I'm at Master Your Talk. You can send me question, comment, insult, complaints. I'm always happy for anything, so don't be shy to send me a message. <laughs> awesome. All right, so we're gonna do five things with Brendan. So just you know, top. I think you've already answered this first question, but we'll still you'll still play along, right? Of course, I'm happy um, to. <laughs> have you always been a good public speaker? Definitely not. Sucked most of my life, which means you can do it too. <laughs> How do you start the day? I start my day in a way that nobody else does. I ask myself a hard question about life. The issue or why most people are unsuccessful is not because they don't have the right habits in place, they're not eating the right yogurt, that's not it. It's they don't ask themselves the hard questions no one else is willing to ask. What are you pretending not to know? If you had all the money in the world, how would you spend your time? And if you died tomorrow, what would your funeral speech say about you? Answer one hard question about your life every day I promise you'll be a different person in 30. Oh, I love that. Now, uh, would you share what question you asked yourself this morning? Yes, I don't do it consistently, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm, always asking, uh, I'm always asking during the day. Well, you came out like with a lot of questions at once just then. So I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. gosh, so, he, he's so, asking so, himself a lot of questions. <laughs> the one, you're like, Dave, this is a long question. So the one I always ask myself every day mm-hmm. is, is a question I got from Peter Thiel, the author of the book Zero to One. He's the founder of PayPal, started a bunch of mm-hmm. companies, Elon Musk. Pretty cool guy. But the, the question he asks in, in the first page of his book is the following. What is the truth that you believe in that most people disagree with you on? So what's something you believe to be true about the world that most people think is BS? And what's interesting about this question is it forces you to answer something controversial. Yes. So I have probably 35 answers to that question now. So I'm always asking myself that constantly because that's where the great ideas come from. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, How do you prepare for big presentations? Jeez, that could be a podcast on its own. But I'd say the the, the quick answer is uh, I'm a nutcase, right? Think of me as the Michael Jordan nobody cared about in university. So mm-hmm. I would yell at teams. I was super intense like he was, but with presentations. So you'd mm-hmm. see me on like a Saturday night just like ripping people apart. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed every <laughs> second of it. And they enjoyed it too. They all won and did really well for themselves. But the point that I'm driving mm-hmm. is I, I prep three months of, at least in advance for any keynote I give. I'm practicing almost every week for some of my big ones. I have t- I have a group of 15 people who give me feedback. So what okay. I do essentially is I record myself, give the keynote, which is right here. And then I send it to all 15 of them and I ask them to give me time stamped feedback. So they would do things like, Brendan, go to 373 or sorry, 343. That didn't make any sense. And they go, yeah. Brandon, why are you smiling when you're talking about a car accident? I go, right, got to change that. But since all <laughs> okay, 15 yeah. people are at, giving me feedback like that, I get all all those little seconds optimized. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty crazy. So I wouldn't follow no, what I'm doing. Yeah, but, no, I think, <laughs> but I mean, it explains why you are as good as you are and why you're able to help other people. So I think that's great. Um, let's see. What do you do when someone tells you no? Let's say business. Let's say business wise. Okay, cool. Because I was like, how, how much? <laughs> I was like, which way do you want to go here? Okay, <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> right. So, if there's anything I've learned, because remember, everyone, I started Master Talk when I was 22, and I started coaching CEOs of companies at 23. In other words, what I'm saying is, who the hell am I to teach communication tips to the world? <laughs> and that's the point. Because a lot of people ask me that they go, how did you get CEOs to to do that? They're, to say yes to you. So the way that I see it is don't sell someone who doesn't want to be sold. Mm. If they say no, it's their problem, Mm -hmm. not mine. Because I got a bunch of clients, I got a lot of work to do, so I'm already busy. But (laughs) but the point that I I drive, and this is true with business, is the bigger the vision, Mm -hmm. the the less, the more you can say no to other people. So for example, let's say Brendan's goal 
was to get 10 clients this year. He got 10, and then that's my goal. And then I make, I don't know, let's say 80 grand a year and we're done. Mm-hmm. What happens with that mer- narrow vision is I also say no to everything, and it's boring and it's not interesting. Right. So, which means, oh, I can't do podcasts anymore because I only have 10 clients and I got my 10, mm-hmm. so I'm done. Yeah. But if my vision is to serve the world, like everybody, mm-hmm. that's why the Master Talk videos for 90% of people who can't afford me. Well, then what happens is I'm serving a lot more people. I have a lot more leverage because mm-hmm. it's easier for people to look at my videos and go, oh, he's like definitely the best in this space, which means I'm never client starved ever. Right. right. There's always a waiting list. So I always have to go, oh, okay, whatever. I don't want to do this. Right? So I say no, like most of the time. So, so what happens is as you get better, the more mm-hmm. generous you are, rather, that's an easy way. The more generous you are in your space, mm-hmm. the less needy you become. Okay. So if they okay. say no, it, it's not because they said no, it's because you said no. Exactly. No, I like that. <laughs> and how do you end the day? How do I end the day? Probably a list of questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I probably just go see my mom upstairs since I live with her. So uh-huh. I always make sure I keep 10 minutes to talk to her because I don't spend a lot of time talking to my family because I'm a workaholic and I love it. But uh, <laughs> I always make sure I got a 10, 20 minutes to just chat with her to see how she's doing. Right. I love it. Okay. So lastly, what is next for you? Lots of things, but I think I think for now it's just been uh, you know figuring out how to navigate this COVID world and putting a lot more attention onto creating a lot more content mm-hmm. and sharing the message out with more people. I, I really hope in one one day that's the ultimate goal for me that everyone isn't scared of public speaking. You know, the next right. fifteen year old girl who grows up goes, "Oh, you're scared of uh, public speaking? You ever hear of Master Talk? There's this Indian guy who's like teaching all this stuff for free." And you're like, "Yeah, I know Master Talk. That's the kind of the world I want." Exactly. To be yeah. In. So, so yeah, hopefully we get there. That's the key. No, I think that's great. I mean, I think it's a excellent platform, and I love that you are sharing your tips and giving to people for free because that a lot of people, you know, like you said, a lot of people maybe can't afford to, you know, um, invest in themselves in that way, but they can at least invest in themselves by going to your YouTube channel and getting some free content. So for that, you know, guys, please check it out because I started and I went down, like I like to say a rabbit hole, but it was like, but it was great because I was like, oh, wait, okay, wait. And then there's this, (laughs) hey, wait a second, but wait. (laughs) And I was like, and then, okay, what? the next thing I know, I was just like sitting there listening to you for like quite some time. And I mean, and you, and it's very quick. I mean, you're not like sitting here holding like a 40 minute, you know, you're like, hitting on these really uh, amazing tips and giving people tools like in a short period of time. So just investing yourselves in the sense of going online, going to YouTube and checking out Brendan and taking his tips in. Also, like I would love for anybody who's out there that's going to like start watching Brendan to come back and email, email me and tell me like how public speaking, how things have changed for you. presenting or just even having basic conversations with people. So I think that, you know, again, I thank you so much for um, coming on because this has, this is like some very valuable um, information. Of course, Kyra, thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, everybody stay tuned. I'll be right back.